Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Next Level. I'm JVL here with my best friend, Tim Miller, now in sunny New Orleans, hey. however you pronounce that. And sitting in for my other best friend is Amanda Carpenter. Hey, Amanda. Hey, how's it going? Oh, it's going so good. It's going all the goods. Uh, you so have like big, too, too many big... syllables on New Orleans. Yeah, New Orleans. okay. Well, at, I'm going to work through It's that. one and a half syllables at best. You had five, I think. New Orleans. Yeah. Right. I have to say it like, like Carville does. Yeah. Yeah. At which Work point we'll it. need, you know, closed captioning for people as transcription service. Uh, so big media week. We'll start with the media <laughs> stories where uh, Tucker Carlson. What a world. Just really quick. What a world. The president of the United States running for reelection. That's the B block. That's the B block. Would you like to do that? It's like the C block. No, it's the C block. Would you like to do that? Of course I would like to do it. It's boring. It's fine. We should get to it in the C block. I'm just saying that's, it's telling. It's just telling about our state of affairs. So uh, at, uh, I believe it was 11 a.m. on uh, Monday morning. And I know this because we were in our our Monday editorial meeting and somebody just in the middle of the editorial meeting said, holy crap, Tucker's been fired. Uh, And it's been dripping out as we were sitting down to tape on Tuesday. Somebody from Vanity Fair reporting that possibly this is all linked to Rupert's ex-fiancee. Uh, saying that she believed Tucker was a biblical prophet. Um, this is I the, love that anecdote. The, uh, I, I mean, I, I feel like we haven't even properly digested the uh, the. It does text create a power divorce. dynamic issue. It does create a power <laughs> dynamic issue if you know the boss's fifth wife thinks that the employee is the angel Maroni. You know, like it just it creates. There can only be one God in this bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amanda. And did, I mean, did was you he jealous? Like, <laughs> did you follow the Jerry Hall breakup where Rupert just texted her? Like she's waiting for him at one of their chateaus where he was supposed to join her for a week. And he texts her and he says, we've had some great times together. Yeah. But I regret to inform you that I have a lot of things I have to do. And so uh, I'm calling a halt to our marriage. I think I'm dissolving our marriage. And your lawyers will hear from my lawyers. Wish you all the best. And she was on camera. She was like, she knew there were cameras at the chateau. And so she started like breaking things and like looking wait, at the wait, camera wait. and like I don't, pointing I don't know at the story. I need a whole reality series <laughs> on the story. Sorry. Why were there cameras there? Because he keeps he's the whole Murdoch's. place. Yeah, she knows yeah, yeah. that everything is. Because he's wanted. monitoring everything at all times, yeah. eye in the sky, yeah. global skynet kind of stuff. Totally <laughs> normal. Yeah. Got it. So, uh, so anyway, he could what see are... her real. Hold on, he could see her real time reaction when he dumped her. I think that she thought. I don't know, and she knew that it was on tape, and <laughs> okay. she knew that people I, were watching. I the like tape. this. <laughs> oh, wait, I like the mer- <laughs> strange new respect for Rupert. Uh, <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so, uh, what do you what do you guys make of the Fox thing? Um, oh, I geez. I had originally, okay. you know, for the first ten minutes, I assumed that this was somehow tied to the Dominion settlement. The more we hear about it, the more it seems like it's tied to the Dominion settlement in, in the sense that uh, there's a bunch of stuff that was redacted in Discovery, but that Fox saw in which they didn't like the way he was talking about the Murdochs. Yes? Yeah, and I think also Suzanne Scott. It seems, I mean, uh, you know, Stelter on, on Charlie's Pod, if you haven't listened to that, you should, which I think is a better place for like the dishy parts of this. I think we can do the political take side of things, but Stelter basically said that it probably seems like he was calling Suzanne Scott the C word in those emails. Is that, that's is that not wrong? Good. It's not great. Is that, it's not is great. that not is that not uh, not allowed? <laughs> is that not allowed? Um, <laughs> what? Uh, well, I hear is, in is Britain that a, is that, they is that use that a, a C Russell word Brand? every day, and it's no big deal. Oh. Is that a Russell Brand <laughs> bit? Um, she, uh, uh, you know, calling Sydney Powell the C word, borderline. You know, borderline. <laughs> no, there are so many other but words you can use to describe Sydney Powell. That's Honestly, true. when that's I saw true. that in the text, I was like, that is shocking. And yes, I expressed that sentiment on Twitter and people said, well, you've never been across the pond. True statement, but I'm still offended. Like, yeah, you don't, enough. I don't, I work in an American workplace. I've never heard anyone say that in a casual conversation. Period. End of story. Certainly not about the boss. Hasn't come up. Certainly not, not with the boss, the boss, not in text to your producers yeah. as just like a casual she's a this. Like, what else is he saying? And so that would make sense if he applied that to other women. That probably wouldn't go over so well. But, I mean, it, this has to be a combination of all the things, right? Yeah. It, it, it's all the things. And 
what what is most stunning is that whatever all the things are that we can speculate about somehow they deemed worse than his ratings right that's the whole thing with fox like he was the ratings king and they s canned him kicked him out the door that's what's incredible about all this with no replacement lined up they've got you know brian Hare killed millie whatever his name is just sitting there now like it must have been really bad or maybe the murdochs i mean he's how old again and how many wives 92. maybe they realized they wouldn't be able to sell this thing given what is all going to come out at some point in time and that's is, where i is think kill me in again on tuesday night i don't know we're taping this like live across from i don't Tucker. know I'm i don't just... know he was in the first I, I, it'll be interesting to see it's rotating yeah i i think that's right i mean the abby grossberg thing i think is very potentially damaging here, here's here let's just work from some facts that we do know the mm-hmm. culture of the tucker carlson staff was not just like bro locker room talk bad it was like eight chan white nationalist bigoted trigger everyone bad it's like it was as bad as it could get i mean we th- he, there have been several staffers fired for posting on white national stars that's blake neff for being a speech trader. yeah yeah blake neff who was at the daily yep. caller and then went with him you know was uh you know was like got outed you know his hand i love this was my favorite one of all and there are like six of these like like white nationalist bros that got fired over the years for tucker working for tucker it's like oh my god how do, how do i keep hiring white nationalists um hey, but Daniel, then... how many people have you fired for being a racist <laughs> white nationalist christo fascist just wondering at least one one. Carry the two. Zero. None. Um, the, <laughs> the, uh, so anyway, the, the Blake Neff one I always liked the best, though, because he got outed, like, posting on one of these shit posting sites, you know, like, message boards, because he, he did a picture of something, and, and his reflection was in the window. <laughs> it's, it's like that you know it's like this stupid uh stupid criminal tricks it's like his reflection was on the window and so people were like oh wait it's the tucker carlson guy and there was always already some suspicions that it was him because some of the stuff he was posting was showing up in the monologues anyway you know it's really really bad a- and so getting to see all of it um you know is, is enough i think you combine that with rupert's wife thinking that uh or ex- it's not not quite wife thinking that uh, tucker was a prophet Combine it with uh, like the January 6th stuff about, you know, the Ray Epps stuff, even for Rupert, like this was getting a little weird, you know, it was getting a little weird um, I, in particular, like there's a lot of bad stuff on the show, but that one in particular is happening. Combine it with Dominion, combine it with Grossberg, uh, you know, maybe it's just event. And then combine it with the fact that it's like the new head woman in charge of calling the C word. You know, that's, that's a lot bad. My, my hot take on all this that I haven't shared anywhere that I saved for this site, uh, for this little podcast. Is, um, is the implications. I was thinking about this, you know, I've been thinking about it. Everyone wants to know my opinion on t- the Tucker thing. I, I think that they are very, I think that they're going to be doubling down on MAGA, on Trump. And the so Fox like, there, yes, there's this whole thing about like, what, With what who, are the they implications? They just fired the only populist on prime TV. They sacrificed our angel, blah, blah, blah. Who, who's better than that? I, are they well, going to dig this up? Is, I guess I just mean the calling off the, the, the dogs, you know, this whole like, Oh, Ron DeSanctis, we're going to do a today show style segment with you where you're throwing the baseball and we're, you know, we're talking about how much you love puppies and non Bud Light beer and how normal how great and normal of a guy you are i don't know i just this is something this is what i'm watching now is that like they are going to be worried about the the same mm-hmm. thing as the post-election stuff losing to newsmax losing to real america voice they're yep. losing tucker and, and that the whole this whole dalliance that the murdochs had this is where the savvy murdochs come in this whole dalliance of oh let's get rid of trump we're you know they've decided instead ah why don't we just get rid of tucker um, the Trump problem might be out of our hands, and and and, yeah. and I could see them pivoting back towards Trump in a real way. Yeah, I I just sorry, JBL. I just want to add this point because I've been thinking about it too. Is I don't know what getting rid of Tucker does to their digital streaming strategy because he was a That's big a part point. of that. Um, you know, maybe she's a CNN Plus in the back of my mind, but he was really the only talent that I could observe that was performing there. There's like a lot of weird specials there, even into like you know, housing type decoration shows, but he was the draw. And so if you don't have that person, and he, you know, that is where they wanted the super MAGA people to go because everybody knows cable's dying. You got to get into streaming, got to do subscription. They don't have a replacement host there that I can see. And so I think they're in more trouble 
and are, might be looking for a sale because Murdoch is old and can't trust the kids. Or maybe I'm watching too much Secession, which I'm not really watching, but I know the plot. <laughs> so here's here's my question to you. One of the things Sarah said to me at some point in the last month was that when she does focus groups and ask people questions about their media diet, that as often as not, instead of saying Fox, people will say, I watch Tucker. And this is like Xerox and photocopies, right? They, you know, what they mean is that they watch Fox, but they say Tucker because mm -hmm. Tucker is Fox and he's the big thing that they watch on Fox, et cetera, et cetera. What does this sort of, because this is really like, you know, Stalin unpersons Trotsky and all of a sudden Trotsky no longer appears in any of the photos in the Kremlin, right? He's just like, Tucker's just gone. He's <laughs> there on Friday. He signs off, says, see you guys on Monday. And then he's he's gone. They're running commercials and promos for his show on Monday morning on the on the network, and he doesn't go on air. Uh, to have your audience and to just disappear their big star without any real explanation, uh, can you do that without losing the audience? Doesn't that smell like cancel culture? I mean, these these are people who are primed to sniff out cancel culture anywhere in the world, right? Does that? feel a little like cancel culture to you i i don't it know like, what on, does the fox audience do about this or nothing do they just come back to their pellet you know they're like little hamsters like you know they go over to the salt pellet and take that it depends on what he says and whether the audience can find him and this is what i really most interested in is what were the terms of his contract we know that he's getting paid out for the duration of it i don't know how much further that goes but how much is he sidelined because the way that these contracts works they essentially own you whether you go on the air or not. I don't know right. what kind of outs he had. They're called outs in terms of you being able to do other times of media. But given that he was on primetime, obviously there's going to be a non-compete. Given that he was very active for their digital strategy, I'm guessing they brought up his digital rights, right? $20 million is a lot of money to pay out for him to do nothing. That means they own the rights to his talent on many degrees. Is he allowed to even go right? for other outlets at this point. Um, can he have any kind of digital product? I mean, Bill O'Reilly yeah. and other people have done that post Fox, but that's after their contracts run out and depending on what they're able to do outside of that contract. And so that is going to determine how he is able to communicate and what he is going to do next. But I could see him do it, building a very successful, you know, I watched his speech at Heritage that he delivered uh, the night before he knew he was going to get fired. And, you know, he's a contrarian. I mean, other people know him better than I do, but I could see him just building a very successful straight up called the contrarian outlet where you have the Alex Joneses and you have the JFK juniors doing every wacky point of view for the debate. And he would just laugh and have a good time and take his saunas in Maine, which he talks about. People say he's going to run for president. I don't buy that one bit. The guy seems to be very private. Uh, he opened up his speech at Heritage talking about how this is the first time he's been with people in three years, the first time he's taken an elevator or worn socks in the last three years. Um, that does not scream a man of the people who's going to go retail politicking New Hampshire to me. Yeah, so I'll, I'll take those points uh, uh, backwards. I'll do, we'll take the, uh, Amanda's point first. I, I think that the contract is really important. There's a, a story that was breaking as we were coming on here about, uh, you know, for somebody saying that he is locked up through... 25 oh. um now again can you can you cut your yes. way out of that can you you know can the big time lawyers come up with something you know can you just i mean he's a very wealthy man can you decide he doesn't want to take the money uh, you know there are a lot of ifs on that um but running for office uh is not um a competitive move you know um that is something that he could do uh, i agree with you i think he's a weird fit for it i um that was a lie that he told heritage he's he's an easy liar because uh, i saw him in front of a big room of people just like three months ago in arizona um but his speech there was was very strange in some ways it was interesting when i wrote about the train point usa thing because at least his speech was interesting it was prov it was provocative yeah. right whereas everybody else said the same shit like uh, his his was faux introspective probably but introspective you know and um, it just wasn't a normal stump speech right uh and so i you know he's not a good fit for uh, for that for a lot of reasons but if he decided to do it he probably he's obviously an extremely talented performer so um i you know i i don't think it's a zero percent chance right? and this guy is just like what the hell am i gonna do is he gonna really fish Fishing gets boring. You know, this is like the old, in the sport and sport. It's like the Tom Brady thing, you know, in sports where people are like, oh, you're going to go hang. I'm going to go hang out with my kids. I'm going to spend time with my family. 
you know, that's great. I'm sure Tom Brady loves his kids, and but spending the time with the kids is, you know, you, 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 yeah, you, you can you can get your Careful. fill. You can get your fill. There's you can cherish every moment with them and think, you know, I'd like something else to do. Also, and fishing uh, is also a very engaging endeavor. From Matt Labash loves to fish. Again, only a certain amount of hours in the year can you fish, right? Like, the, uh, so, uh, so something else he, 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 you know, might want to decide he wants to do. I think that's the scary result of this. I, I think those are the two, both that and Fox pivoting back to Trump, uh, you know, are the two potential negative externalities for this. Everything else about deplatforming Tucker is positive. Lastly, just on the, to the pellet question the JVL asked about with the Fox viewers. I think the question is, what percentage of these people are are full MAGA and what percentage of them are TV zombies, right? I had yeah. a very lovely lady who I who I, I met um, on the street the other day. She's like, I see you on Channel Seventy Two, and you know I get the sense that this person, God love her, just like leaves on Channel Seventy Two, MSNBC, on locally all the time, right? I think that there's a <laughs> big percentage of the Fox audience that just leave on Channel whatever it is. They're Fox people. Brian I'm watching Kilmer. my shows. Yeah, I'm watching right my now. stories. Heg Seth will come on, whatever. There is a percentage, just based on the numbers, that tuned in for Tucker. That did not tune in it for is. Brett Baer. That did not tune in for Hannity. That turned it off when Hannity came on, or Laura came on, rather. Uh, and so, do those people disappear? Is that a meaningful enough number that, that Fox needs to you know figure out how to, how to deal with that? I don't know. I know. And there will also be you know vultures out there. Shapiro, Bannon, you know, all these people are going to smell blood. And, and uh, my la- I, and I said that was my last thing, but my last, last thing, just because we've been doing this now, we're 20 minutes in, like, people are like, oh, who cares, kind of. I, I, I can understand the sense of, like, why obsess over this? Like, it is, it is just going to be the pal. It is just going to be a rotating cast. Tucker was a category difference from all these other people. He just was. Like, the, the types of material that he trafficked in w- was more pernicious than the other uh, hosts on the network. His brand... You know, like these other people, when you go to the CPACs, when you go to the Turning Point USA things, they're walking down the hall. They're celebrities. They're, you know what I mean? They're like, they, you want their autograph, you want their picture with them. The Tucker connection was different. Like it, 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 I'm not saying it had a ton of depth, but like there was some, some, something there that he was molding them in a certain way, um, ideologically that was that was very i think damaging to our to the fabric of of the country but but i think gives him a lot more power and influence than say o'reilly who was just really really famous but kind of like doing the stuff that everybody else was doing it just like a little bit better i just want to close this segment by acknowledging that i was right about dominion and that having consequences that's, That's right. I mean, I'm going to get a t-shirt. Do we have anything to say about Don, yeah. Don Lamont? Uh, let's just, to- let's, just let's pour one out for all Don Lamont. He's been good to the program. Um, cheers, buddy. Uh, hopefully he gets I believe I'm the only Louisiana. person here who's never been on his show, correct? Mm. Yeah, probably. Correct. I mean, he's Look at that. Cheating. JVL never invited to Don Lamont's show. Mm. You can it go. Like you're yeah. dying to do cable news, yeah. JVL. Yeah. No, I will say, it I'm, would be I nice to show- be asked, Amanda. It would be but nice after to you be say asked. so many times. All right, do you, want, do you want me to get you on the eleventh hour with Stephanie Rule? Yeah, it's great. It's on eleven <laughs> fifteen. Yeah, we can, we can make this it's on eleven fifteen p.m. Eastern. I'll get you on there by Memorial Day. You ready? Is that what you want to do? <laughs> yeah, Memorial Day is free. You yeah. probably get on Memorial 11 Day PM on Memorial Day. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I was the, on the with Zoom. him a lot. Do you remember yeah, the, was... the pre-Zoom? Hold on one second, man. In the pre-Zoom no, days, do you guys remember this? Back when you have to actually get to a studio. Yeah, there was a certain class of Washington pundit who would be the the one willing to say yes to like two thirty in the afternoon on a Sunday. Yeah, and you know, just like desperate to get on TV, and so I would wait to because you know the bookers filling afternoons on weekends is really really hard because it just blows up your whole day. But there was a certain class of pundit who would be like, "Yep, yep, ready to go, ready to go, send a car." And I will, you know, schlep the 45 minutes from my Maryland suburban apartment to, uh, you know, the studios down by Union Station. And I will spend what it winds up being four hours of my weekend so that I can be on TV for 120 seconds. As, as sure Gore thing. Vidal said, never, never miss a chance to have sex or be on television. 
Oh, I can think of all kinds of reasons to skip both of them. Wisdom (laughs) wisdom from (laughs) Gore Vidal. (laughs) Anywho, Amanda, you have some Don Lamont thoughts? No, I mean, I spent a lot of late nights, you know, election coverage, um, you know, on a show remote in studio. He, He was really nice. I mean, I know there's a lot of stories about the diva-like behavior, and obviously some of that is true. Um, but it was nice because when you go on at 11 o'clock at night, you could say your piece. And there were a lot of articles I got to really flesh out when I had my book out. His production team did a really nice job. And so I think the transition was extremely hard to go from having your own show and being in charge of it from 9 to 11 p.m. Or no, no, no. He was 10 to midnight, which is a hard shift that he did for Oof. many years many years and then to automatically go to morning television with two um younger co-hosts a three-person show is kind of crazy anyway and to have to share that i I think there was just obviously going to be problems with that kind of format and there was yeah it seems like he might have been had some diva quality so i don't don't know him that well so i I won't i won't grant that i don't i don't really know what cnn's doing though like i'm not a tv i'm uh, yeah, I, I, this seems like the kind of job it's it's i always said about political campaigns the thing that was annoying is that everybody thought they're an expert you know i'd go home to like the high school reunion and people would be telling me what jeb should be doing and i was like this <laughs> i've said to my all my doctor friends i'm like they don't tell you how to cut the eyeball open you know when you go back to <laughs> high school but okay anyway uh that's here one I am, very specific it. doctor friend you're talking about there yeah it is, it is. <laughs> um here's uh here is uh uh, my uh, version of that, though, for Chris Licht, is like it doesn't seem like they have any plan to to attract people. Like I I, I don't know the it did, that morning yeah. show made no sense from the start. Uh, those people didn't seem to have any any chemistry. This notion that CNN in a post Trump era we're not in a post Trump era like needs to be more yeah, serious, right. and it's like we're gonna win back center right people. It's like who. Who? It's it's fine. Sure, there are people that read and love our friends at the Dispatch. Like that's great. Like they read, you know. Like, uh, but is that enough for t- cable TV show? You know, and me, I went on Steve's podcast when we talked about this, and like, I was like, this is a niche product you guys are offering. That's fine. That's nothing wrong with a niche product. But that's not. Who are you bringing back in? All the Republicans like Trump. Right. So like, who are you trying to attract by by being more center? Like Trump has even the people that like DeSantis like Trump, you know, so great. Maybe you can get eight percent more people into the show. Does that help your numbers? Obviously not. It didn't make sense from the start. The math isn't there on the numbers. And then, you know, I I wish they would just say Don Lamont was a jerk and that's why we got rid of him. Then you have to do you do this post hoc stuff about how, oh, in these interviews, the Nikki Haley thing, which was a gaffe. But like you're doing live TV for many hours. It was a gaffe. You apologize. Then did you see the Vivek Ramaswamy one? The one that they were citing? Vivek Ramaswamy goes on the t- on the show and is like, black people should thank the NRA yeah. for protecting their rights. And the NRA w- was a key group in helping secure the civil rights of Americans. That's yeah, like yeah. the <laughs> Civil Rights Act. Well, thanks to the NRA, the Civil Rights Act happened. Yeah, interesting. That's a hot take. take. Yeah, yeah, interesting perspective. Don, Don is like, what the fuck are you talking about? And the people are talking in his ear, and and he's like, stop talking in my ear. I need to like, I need to engage with this insane point this guy is making. And then you know they go back and forth, and Don just like, are, are you black explaining to me? And you know maybe you didn't have to bring the race in, but it's just like, I, I, you know, this shows just that this whole, you know, what are you supposed to do? When 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 yeah. a Republican comes on TV and is like, "Oh, black people need to thank the NRA for their rights," like you're supposed to just be like, "Oh, well, there's one opinion, okay," and on the other side, not true, right? Like I, I don't know, and and that's what we're seeing and trying to go, and I just don't think that there's an audience for it, except for in times of hurricanes or war or whatever, and that's that's an important service, but that's not, you know, yeah, that's not a Tuesday. Here- Here's a question that kind of gets into how you think Fox is going to lead into MAGA or Trump and what Licht is trying to do. You know, that debate that Don was having with Vivek, like in the Zucker era, that is definitely something, you know, we... They yeah, Zucker thought, would have been yes, like, keep it running. This. Keep it running. Lean into yeah, this. run the tape. Like, let's engage. And you can see Poppy just leaning back, scrolling her phone. She's like, uh-oh, this is not... <laughs> eject, eject. But, you know, it's like Licht is trying to dial all the politics down and be yeah. super bland. And so maybe if Fox goes super Trump, which I don't totally believe that quite yet, but I think it is clearly the strategy of CNN to turn down the politics 
right. that's how they think they're going to attract they're viewers by just kind of like just just flattening everything. I mean, they're springing in Gail Gail King and Barkley. What? Like that's going to be their 9 p.m. out Charles Barkley? Do you guys see this? Yeah. Like I mean, Barkley's great, I, but yeah, but for 9 p.m. and the prime time at CNN, is that what news yeah. viewers want to see? Like, if you're trying to be a new trusted news station, is it Gail King and the well, sports guy? Like also maybe on the Sunday morning. Yeah. Also, but, we're going into 2024, and the guy yes. that tried to end our democracy is the, is one of the leading candidates. Okay, so like yep. politics is kind of important. And smooth all that out. It makes no sense to me. But you know, I'm not getting paid Chris Lick money. I'm all right. available though. I don't know <laughs> yeah, if, if Zaz, whatever his name is. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't want to leave Zaz. you guys. But if yeah. somebody wants to give me a network, I've got some ideas. Well, if you get a network, can I get a show? Yeah, well, maybe. Okay. We'll see. We'll have, to, we'll have to do a screen test. <laughs> Will I get okay. to go on one of your shows as a guest? <laughs> no, definitely on not. Sunday at 2.30 on yeah. Sunday afternoon, definitely and I have to be live in studio. That can be your hour. <laughs> right. I'm not allowed to Zoom it. I have to be live in studio. Great. Mm-hmm. Wah, wah. We'll get you a car. Uh, okay. So the other big news is that the President of the United States has announced that he's running for re-election, as some people said was going to happen all along. Uh, Who? <sighs> Take your victory lap. Would you like to run this around guy. your little Zoom studio? This guy. So, uh, I don't know. I, I had my, my I did my take today in the triad uh, when I said, like, you know, you people, you're going to like it. You're going to get more Biden and you're going to like it. Because you know <laughs> what the truth is? I think people are basically going to be fine with it. And uh, especially if Trump is the nominee, all of this stuff about Biden is too old is going to go away. And everybody's just going to say five Hail Marys for him every night that he doesn't fall <laughs> and that he basically can make his way through November of 2024 because there is nobody better. If, if the goal is to to beat Donald Trump again, Biden is the best bet. He is, he is the best. Even if you had a, a magic wand and could just tap any Democrat to become magically the nominee— you you wouldn't want anybody other than Biden. Am I crazy, Amanda? I could yeah, go ahead, Amanda. No, I no, I like it's it's remarkable that he's completely cleared the field. Right? Like there's no challenger. I, I think that is number the number one testament of his success. He's convinced everyone yeah. else not to run before he's even declared. I mean, today Bernie Sanders put out the statement essentially saying, Yep, yep, we're gonna yep. do this thing. He he is the unity candidate, which you should expect from the incumbent president, but still, given his age, given his approval ratings aren't great, I think that's pretty remarkable. Well, this is one of the marker historically, one of the markers of successful reelection campaigns is yep. that you have to avoid a primary, right? And if as a sitting president, you avoid a primary, then your chances of winning reelection go up a lot. Unless you're Trump. So, um, can I, I, I want to range about the age thing for one second and then I, then I have some other announcement thoughts, but to, cause since you brought it up with the, with the Biden age thing, I've, we've all been, I've, I've said it, you know, Sarah's, everybody said it. Like there, there are legit concerns about the age I have. I have anxiety about debate to, you know, something happening that shows the age when it's too late. I, right. Like all of that, I have anxiety about it. It's just, it's a, it's a risk factor. There's a risk factor with any candidate, but I got to tell you. It feels like some of the mainstream outlets like are you know trying to go overboard in in focusing on the age thing in order to like display their yeah. lack of bias or whatever. There's a Times mm-hmm. editorial about it the other week. When was the last time one of these places did an editorial about Trump's age? Like Trump's age gets like thrown in as like a throwaway line in article in like editorials about Biden's age. Like oh by the way Trump's old too. It's like Trump is old as fuck. Okay, Trump is out there just eating well done steaks. All right, like that guy is like his brain is mush. I, you know, he he is he's bragging about doing like a basic cognitive test, like remembering five Man, words in an camera, order. Woman, <laughs> right? TV, right? Like I mean, you know, stuff that uh, you know a child could pass. I mean, so I I, I just don't. And then who's his VP going to be? Like, it's certainly not going to be a, a, somebody that everybody's like, oh man, we're going to be in good. We're going to be in good hands if Carrie Lake, Lake is in Lake. there, or Tucker, or whoever. At least Stefanik. So I just that that part does bug me that there's this asymmetry of all this that, that is the, uh, and and I feel like that this is going to happen over and over again in this in in this campaign where people feel like they have to you know try to make this something, something more than but what it see, is there is a i mean there's a 
there's a reason for this, right? What and is? that is that the delta between what Joe Biden sounded like in 2012 and what Joe Biden sounds like in 2023 is noticeable. Whereas Trump, word salad is word salad, right? And this is in, in a weird way. <laughs> That's his not true. Go back, limitations, and, go back and watch the Trump Larry King interviews. He's an idiot, but he's well, not. I mean, he's got to go back I, really far, right? He's, 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 yeah, he's using three syllable words. In the, Trump's using three syllable words in the Larry King interviews. I, someone just did a tweet about 2010 where he was talking about topography. Ooh, Trump's not saying something. that. Right. Yeah, he's not saying that word now. Okay, I don't. I, Trump is <laughs> Trump is declining. All right, he's the same. No, he but is. He's but declining. what you see it with Trump? So again, just having watched a bunch of videos back to back of him, the where you see the decline is not in the words themselves because he just talks gobbledygook and has been talking gobbledygook for you know seven years. You see it in the energy in the animation, and so you see it. And that's why I, I'm fine with people writing all these thumb-sucking pieces about it. Because the truth is, if if Trump and Biden are the nominees, then everybody's just going to see the crazy, right? I mean, right. It, it, it's going to be obvious when you see Trump. I and mean, the choice is, you know, do you want the old guy who's crazy or the old guy who isn't as sharp as he was four years ago? But the strategy for Biden will be much like it was in 2020, is to just lay back and let the contrast serve itself. Yeah. Just say, Which, hey, I'm, I'm governing. I'm busy governing America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But that's, you know, it's 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 a little risky because action usually trumps inaction. Um, we'll see. But on the point about b- being annoyed that people always con- uh, reference Biden's age. I mean, they have to say something. I mean, it is sort of the both sides thing. But that's like the most obvious thing to say. Right. They're not saying he's a terrible president. His programs are failing. He's just saying, yeah, he's old. Like, it's unavoidable. And so yeah. I, he's got to make uh, do with it. Did you guys see my other take on that this uh, announcement today? Did you guys see the RNC's uh, response video? The no. AI thing? you not seen this, Travia? No. Oh, you're going to love this. Tell um, me more. Yeah, the AI thing. The RNC put out a video <laughs> about what life would be like in 2025 or 6 if Joe Biden was reelected. And it included all AI images. And it was, you know, this like hypothetical, dystopic, dystopian future where San Francisco has, you know, they're, they're like martial law has set in in San Francisco. Yeah. And, but you know, do they know? Joe Biden's president but now, right? I mean, it's just like <laughs> these guys. Like, it's so it's such the D team over there. I, the ta- the talent drain. I, I I feel bad for the twenty six year old Democratic strategist that has to compete against like fifteen other really smart people to get the job of like deputy rapid response oh. director at the DNC. And it's just like these clowns that are getting these jobs at the RNC because they're the only ones that'll raise their hand to be like, I guess I'll do it. I'll take this. Um I, I it's just like that it just show the weakness of their opposition. You know, when when Donald Trump right now is the like nearly presumptive nominee, a heavy favorite, and, and in real awesome. life, yeah, in real he's life, he's clearing the field too. Yeah, yeah, in real life, this guy uh, uh, spurred on a attack on the Capitol, and yeah. your response is, "Oh, here's a hypothetical future using fake Terminator images." <laughs> I mean, that's that's pretty that's, awesome. that's about as strong of a sign of joe biden's political strength as is out there and you can focus on the numbers that are like oh a certain number of people don't want him to run or whatever but if it's like if that's your opening punch the not, truth is not life great. is okay yeah this, not is, this is the, the problem truth is life I mean, the is problem okay. for for the republicans is that life is okay and it may not be okay come october of 2024 we could hit a recession you know any number of things could get biden could fall and break his hip Right. This is the thing that happens to 80 years old, 80 year olds. Uh, well, usually their hip breaks and then they fall. <laughs> no, that's really that's why everybody gets broken. You know, is he doing, is he doing no, hip their bones openers? are weak. Your bones break the bones are and yeah. then you fall. Is he, but they think that the... is he doing the pigeon? pigeon? Yeah, the pigeon pose and yoga. And pigeon? Pigeon. Uh, you know, oh. I, I, I bet. Uh, Joe, no, I bet Joe does not. That do doesn't yoga. help with bone density and brittle. Joe, Joe thinks that yoga is malarkey. Uh, the Amanda, ice cream is probably good. Is calcium. 
<laughs> insure. He's drinking his insure. That's Man, pretty Let's talk softens. a little bit about the collapse of the Republican primary field, which you just mentioned, because that is highly interesting to me. Mike Pompeo, out. Out. Uh, Nikki Haley going maybe somewhere, I guess, kind of slow. Tim she Scott. She gave a speech at the SBA list today. It was supposed to be like a major speech on, you know, abortion policy, which, you know, I'm interested in talking about. But the, the funniest thing about the staging for it is that the political write-up said it was uh, conducted in a converted break room, which tells you hmm. the massive audience that came to listen to Nikki Haley wow. talk about her thoughts on abortion, which amounted to a bunch of wishy-washy mishmash mush. Just really quick um, on Tim Scott, pundit accountability here, not a virgin. That was, we, we oh. did discover oh, after God, the last that's... podcast. I know, I, we don't have to dwell on it. And Amanda actually helped with the research on this. It wasn't personal, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> but on Google. So he was only the 50-year-old version? Yeah, I don't, 40, I think. Um, he was the 40 year old. Yeah. So, so anyway, I just, we corrected it in the <laughs> show notes on the last show. But this is, we're accountable here, okay? We're, this, this is not fake news. This is not disinformation. If I say something that's wrong, I do like to correct myself. Not a virgin any longer. Uh, I mean, he was a virgin for quite some time, but not a virgin any longer. I mean, the thing that's weird is that he's just not married. I mean, typically presidential candidates are married or at least have like a long time partner of some sort. He's an outlier in this respect, especially for the church community. You know, last unmarried president was. I mean, it's Edith like, Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I mean, you know, maybe like James Buchanan wasn't married or something. I don't know. Uh, I, you know, we'd have to. That's an Adam Kuyper question. Yeah. Well, but uh, I. Well, yeah. anyway, the point is nobody realized that he wasn't married, let alone other things. I derailed us. The, the okay. field. We were talking about the field. Yeah. Where was I going? Um, the unscheduled also, disassembly. So, the, no, yeah. The so, there's that the with Tim Scott, which will de- derail any conversation. Yeah. Um, let alone when he's asked about abortion, he brings up banking committee hearings, which also like, OK, maybe the unmarried guy who was a virgin until he was 40 or 50 years old shouldn't be talking about abortion policy. Just saying. Strikes me as kind of weird. Everybody says he's the next big thing. No, I don't. I think that disqualifies you from the conversation. Sorry, that's my personal opinion. Um, Glenn Youngkin apparently says that he's waiting to make a decision after November when the Virginia mm. ses- uh, legislator session closes, which pretty much means he'll have a hot eight money, weeks maybe. to get to uh to iowa yeah but he's not <laughs> running so that leaves trump vivek ramaswamy vivek whatever um asa oh yeah he's running okay Haley and tim scott right yeah what and a field i'm gonna D. say t- i'm gonna say trump has cleared it Ron D. isn't in he's not running yet oh chris oh, christie chris christie. Chris christie actually declared is he just playing no. footsie to get more interviews and talk like a tough guy? The I Chris think Christie so. Leibovich like breakfast interview. If you haven't read it in the Atlantic, it's so it's, good. It's amazing. It's so good. Um, yeah, I think Christie doesn't run. Uh, I think Brian Kemp doesn't run. You know, we're going to wind up with a very tiny field, I think. Uh, Which everybody I, you said was good for DeSantis. But. Yeah. I still, Sununu, no, Chris Sununu is not running. Um, and I just want to say gut check. Do you guys think Ron DeSantis is running? Yes or yes, no? Yes, of course. Yes. I think so. I think he has to. I don't know. Don't you? I think he has cold feet. Oh, I, I think, think he, he has, has cold to. feet too. Um, yes. Yeah, so, well, they're about to announce 30 million raised. It's it, that, it's hard to say no when you do that kind of stuff. A lot of pressure. Interest, and this is why he's flying to Japan. He's doing I, the mailers. I, in, in the article I have tomorrow on his campaign, a friend in Iowa sent a mailer that they're sending into Iowa I mean, that had quotes from people from all the early states i mean like he's running like the only reason he's the only thing that he's not doing is actually raising money into a campaign committee because it's illegal and, because and getting Florida endorsements from people laws. who know him he's yeah. not doing that well he's trying to mm-hmm. though he's it's, it's just he seems like he's repelling everyone that he meets he's like three a, assistant like editors a human of compact magazine have endorsed him <laughs> yeah like he went and met. Did, you, did you see the other thing I met? I do. I, I this is. Uh, I've, I'm like I have eight half written articles right now, which JVL really likes. Um, and one of them that's coming soon. Um, uh, did you see Lee Zeldin? Lee Zeldin yeah. was like supposed to be in DeSantis's leadership team, and every he was the big hot thing, and everybody was like, "Oh, Lee Zeldin." You know, DeSantis went and campaigned for him, endorsed Trump. 
So it's Tim, like, what is it when you have all this money, all this potential, why are these people bolting? Why does Re- Lee Zeldin bolt? I mean, that's kind of a dramatic move. They have a, he has a stench on him, Ron. Well, yeah, like, but not still, a, not like, a okay, legit, so he's an opportunist, one. stinky, stenchy person. Why does he bolt? Because he thinks that he doesn't think that he's going to win. He doesn't think he can win. Uh, yeah, I think loser to, stench yeah. is what loser stench is what Tim meant. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I, I, mean, I don't. I, it's crazy though. It's crazy. I, I'm. I don't. I'm not exactly bullish on Ron DeSantis, but I, I do think everyone's overstating just how disastrous of a situation he's in. I mean, like a lot can happen between now and January, and he's the only one standing there with the bag. You know, if something does happen, really. I mean, none of those other people we mentioned. The nominee is not going to be Nikki Ailey, Tim Scott, Vivek Ramaswamy, Asa, God love him. So I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't quite get let it. Me, I, I think there, there must be... Yeah. Vivek Ramaswamy is finishing third in New Hampshire. Go write Maybe that down. Maybe second. Maybe second. Maybe second. Maybe second. Ron yeah, Paul not, finished second. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Vivek finishes second or third in New Hampshire. Uh, it, look, it is possible that DeSantis runs and turns it into really a demonstration campaign where he has viewed this entire thing as I'll be Trump's understudy. And if something really blows up or the guy dies or something, then I'm there. Yeah. But I won't run super hard and I'll I'll take my beating in the two early states. Then I'll say... I'm staying until South Carolina. I'll go down to South Carolina and get my teeth handed to me, and then I will drop out and gracefully endorse Trump. I mean, in the olden and now days, that's how second. you got nominated. Right. This I mean, is how you get how nominated. That's how Hillary got nominated. That's how McCain exactly. got nominated, right? Like, that's how Bush got nominated. Yeah. A-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
right? You know, we're a lot of the groomers and the 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 frazzle drippers, and we're gonna we're gonna stick them in the gas chamber in Florida. Uh, and he he wants to lower the standard in Florida. We're currently in death penalty cases. Uh, the jury has to be unanimous on the sentence, and he wants it to be eight voters, which. Uh, I think it's insane. I I'm I'm I've been against the death penalty, you know, as long as I've been alive. Uh, I've become more against it. If the, if one can get more against the death penalty, like the more I've seen of the justice system, where you know before I was against it, even when I had perfect faith in the justice system as a kid. Now that I've seen what it looks like, I'm like, fuck no, you can't let the government do things that are irreversible because the government gets things wrong all the time. Uh, anyway. Th- th- is anybody else grossed out by this? I guess is what I'm trying to, to grasp around here for. I am for a different reason. So it's my understanding that in Florida, it had to be unanimous. He wants to take it back down to eight. And he made this policy proposal in reaction to the conviction of the Parkland shooter, who was not going to get the death penalty because not, not all the jurors were unanimous. And so there was yeah. outcry over that. You know, like... I think in cases like that, where it's very clear where a heinous crime is committed, I'm okay with that. I don't know where that puts me in the pro-life schedule, but for something like that, I'm okay with it. What what I am uncomfortable with is that DeSantis didn't come from this from like, okay, I thought about this and heinous decisions. This is what I believe. He did it in reaction to Parkland as sort of a way to make the public feel better. Instead of doing anything about guns, you know, reducing... Yeah the liability you know ability for guns to get in the hands of crazy people or actually being vocally supportive of the red flag laws that are on laws that are on the books in Florida this is where he goes like I'm going for blood you know I'm going to be tough this guy should die which you know I sort of agree with but that is not fixing the problem and is doing it with this degree of bloodlust that should never be shown by a governor a presidential candidate anybody in office and so I think that's where it gets a little scary. And he's also seems to be competing with Trump, who has been talking about bringing back the death penalty yeah. for all kinds of crimes, joking around dealing. about using the guillotine, you know, mass executions. Mm. Like that is where, you know, my spirit well, starts to, to leave my body fetish. a little bit and get scared. Yeah. He, so. he is, he has, Trump has long fetishized uh, Duterte, who's the, the strong man in the Philippines who, you know, basically had, had, you know, unsanctioned killings by the thousands. Uh, yep. And Trump loves that, which, you know, shocker is, again, a hallmark of authoritarians everywhere is that they want to be able to use the power of the state to kill people. Uh, and I don't know. I guess this is I look at the DeSantis thing and I think, is this him trying to to ante up even with that stuff with Trump? Yeah. I think it's a full Tim? box check. Yeah, well, this, this is what Diana goes on the, uh, this morning. It's just like, this is a full... He has decided that, that the way that he competes, like, he knows internally that he can't go toe-to-toe with Trump on the rhetoric stuff, that they're not going to be able to do that good stage, that, that he yeah. competes. And this is the Cruz strategy. I, there was some Cruz elements to it. I compared it to Warren in the article this morning, is that, um, uh, you know, that he competes by being like, I'm the checklist guy. Yeah. I'm gonna go. I I'm gonna and you you watch. He Give spoke me the at survey. The, yeah, if you spoke at the Utah convention, you wa- I watched his speech at the Utah convention, and it's just he checks. It's a tick through. It's the abortion, the six mm-hmm. weeks. It's the it's the it's Disney. It's all this weird online stuff that people have no idea what he's talking about. Most people like the ESG and the DEI and the woke and the, <laughs> the, and the digital currency. No federal digital currency. No, never I'm in like... Florida's border will there be a digital. And people are like, yay, okay, weird. <laughs> About like a couple of of you know of we of super online people like really care about this stuff. So that's what he's. And so I just think that the the capital punishment thing which i didn't mention in the story is is in the same vein is like okay constant we're on all this cultural issues you know it's that gross immigration bill where you know you can you can get in trouble for just transporting an immigrant right like it's a immigration check you know and then we sent the immigrants to martha's vineyard you know it's abortion it's six weeks it's constitutional carry you know it's the death penalty the problem is that just like there aren't that many people that actually fit that 
um, you know, like, like, like people say that the Republican you mean voters? base, yeah, voters, like there are like, yeah. like there is not actually a majority of Republican voters. They're like, I'm hardline right on every single issue. Like a lot of those, like people have complicated views, you know, like, like it's not, it's not like it is on twitter.com where there's a war and you have to be on your side side all the time. Like regular voters, like, like they have some pretty crazy views on a lot of things. Republican primary voters, like for the fact that Donald Trump won the last election, for example, and immigration stuff. But like once you, the more detail you plug in on all of that, the more voters start to be like, I don't know about this actually. And like Warren ran into that um in in 20 uh in 2020 and and i and i do think that that this is desantis um it's a strategic move um to 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 check off all those boxes and it's not actually serving him as well as he thinks boy howdy well uh good show long show great show give us a participation trophy and great show. We Good. all deserve yeah. a trophy. I, you know, I'd want to talk about the participation trophy know, stuff, but Amanda wasn't feeling it. So I know, Tim didn't want to talk about Supreme Court ethics, which I, I am very disappointed I, about. I'm disappointed in your oh. ethics commitment, Tim. Oh, but okay. well, now people are seeing behind the scenes. Minutes. On Friday, I'm going to talk about the participation trophy stuff with Sarah on the Secret Show, That's and I'm just gonna just gonna go right here and tell you that I would bet anything, Sarah Longwell. Is hundred percent down with a state ban on participation trophies. Yeah, probably. I don't think, no, not a federal ban. Sarah does not like the yeah, state ban. Yeah, she would use the heavy hand of the state to do government. that. Yeah, not the heavy hand of the state. But she, she state definitely, government. I gotta tell you, she definitely, if one of her kids got a participation trophy, that she would be throwing that in the trash. A school board ban. She'd be throwing. Sarah that in the school should board. run for school board <laughs> on a, a participation, participation trophy tro- ban. This- and. <laughs> As as you know, the corollary one A to that rule, losers of all child sports games have to go to school the next day wearing an "I am a loser" hat <laughs> to try to help them really appreciate the importance of victory no. and winning. No. <laughs> That's the Longwell way. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, Sebastian is coming to her defense right now. Thank gosh. No, I'm kidding. Does. I'm kidding. Oh, anyway, I'm gonna. I will. I will talk about all of this we'll with Sarah on Friday. Um, and you'll be able to listen to it great. if you're a Bulwark Plus member. If you're a Bulwark Plus member, I'm, I'm pitching your show, The Secret. Yeah, That's only for Bulwark you. Plus members. Very Eight kind. bucks. Not that much. It's much, but it's a good deal. Better than Twitter. Uh, go sure. hit the hit the like button for us. Hit the subscribe button for us. I would like to have more five-star reviews, please, on your, sure. your Apple Podcasts app. Please go for that. Uh, please, in the comments on the uh, on the podcast app, please talk about how great Amanda is. Because oh, I, I do grade all of your I, comments. I grade I all of your that. reviews. Uh, and uh, we'll see you again and on Sunday, Sunday. I actually have a good one. We've taped it so I can say. You know, I don't like to jinx it if we haven't taped it yet. We've already mm-hmm. taped it. Abigail Spamberger. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, man, Ooh, we do, we do a little Sarah politics. Longwell we, favorite. I know. We do a little more politics than I wanted. But we we get into the CAA career. CAA career is a, it's, it's a, it's a strange life. You know, you, she. I didn't realize this. I thought she was just kind of like somebody that worked. At, every you, you get a whole cover story. It's like her college friends like thought she was a Pilates instructor or something. Not that not Pilates instructor. <laughs> but like you have to tell. You have to have a whole different. De- and I was like, wow. So we got into that a little bit. Some parenting stuff. It was great. She's great. Basically, she was Jennifer Garner and Alias. Sweet. I didn't watch that, but it sounded like it. <laughs> Bye, everybody. See ya.